G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Halliborn with Mags and today we have a little bit of an interesting video. Today's video is being recorded completely live as you can probably see by the camera that should be on screen at the moment if I've done this right. Um, yeah, I talk with my hands a little bit. Anyways, moving on. As I mentioned in the last Halliborn video, Jetcat Games was getting ready to release a new series of controls for Joystick and Hotaz as well as a flight model to go with them. This has since happened and today I'll be flying it out for the first time. Now originally the idea was I was going to get involved in the beta testing but I've had that much on I haven't had a chance to actually do that. So this will be my first time flying out on their new flight model. Now I've pre-configured the helicopter and the controls before takeoff so everything should be set up. I'm hoping I got everything right. Now I'm using, I'm not using a HOTAS this time, I'm using the VKB Sim Gladiator 2, it's their new joystick out. It's been out for a couple of weeks now, I've had it for a couple of weeks. I will be doing a review on this one soon, it's actually why I'm using it at the moment, and this is sort of the last bit of my testing. Now on the left hand side you can see the small throttle, this is set to be my collective. We have a couple of buttons here, they're actually designed for flap controls that I have for weapon selection, although the new flight model allows you to directly bind controls. So I have a machine gun and gun pods, both operating on the trigger mechanism, and then there is a small trigger here that I can squeeze that will allow me to shift this over to a second button, basically a shift optional button selector, to activate rockets. So I should be able to, well, be able to fire all the weapons in this, theoretically, without having to change, actually manually select weapons. I should be able to just pull the trigger and go. So, um, at the moment we are alone, this is going to be a single fly out unless somebody else happens to join the room, so let's see exactly what happens. 50% collective, and we're still not, oh, there we go, we're up. Oh, the HUD's changed a little bit, ah, oh, that's nice. Uh, top right hand corner of the HUD, you can see the collective position, and if I, yeah, scroll it down, 50%. So you can see the relative collective position based on what I've got on the throttle here, which is nice. Let's do some slow maneuvering for starters. There is no push forward to go button. You now move forward by pitching forward. And there's a slight turn on the turn. Which is about right. Let's see if I can stop. And bring it back to level. There's no drift in at this point. This is the first iteration. Ah, oh, there we go. Yep, I can strafe by stopping the helo. I now only control sideways movement, which is nice. The collective sensitivity is good. It's going to be a little awkward controlling the collective because the, uh, the throttle on this joystick is small and you generally want a little bit more space than that. Um... Just looking at that, it looks like the torque is controlling from the position of the camera rather than from the central axis of the helicopter. But as I said, this is the first iteration. Oh, of course, push forward, you now drop altitude. Oh, that's nice. Um, as I was saying, this is the first iteration of the flight model. There's actually quite a lot more that went into this patch, as I, I haven't got all the patch notes in front of me now, but one of the main things I did notice was a change. Oh, 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 it's all gone wrong. Less time, yeah, more time concentrating on the helo. So that's all right, we'll bring out the H34. I'll throw this one back up and get this thing back in the air. Crash my Huey, god damn it. Oh, well, Ooh. it's interesting. This one actually feels a little bit heavier. It'll work the collective that little bit harder. Does it? Could be in my imagination. I, I'm not entirely sure if there's a unique flight model for each helo yet, or whether or not it is universal. I'll need to do a little bit more testing, but that's what this video is about. Um, that feels nice. Fine control is it's very good. It's a bit odd that the helo talks from the camera position rather than from the central point of the helo, but. It's not going to take that much to get used to. It's not the first time I've seen that either. Ooh, scrape the rails there. I'm going to break this thing again. I just know I am. Much easier to pull it up and slow it down. Um, yeah, as I was saying, the patch notes did have 
uh, a mention of vehicles actually changing the way they take damage. You'll no longer be able to blow tanks apart, main battle tanks apart, with small caliber rifle ammunition anymore. You'll need, preferably, I think it mentions that 12.7s will be able to get through from high angles, but for the most part you'll be wanting a cannon. Um, preferably a large cannon if you're going to pop tanks with anything but rockets or uh, guided missiles. Alright, let's go out and we'll do a little bit of a landing over here. We'll cap 11. So we've got vehicles coming in already. Back on collective. Yeah, the pitch angle seems to be based on the camera position as well, rather than on the helo itself. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so the wire doesn't connect. you got to watch telephone wires in Halliborn. They actually are collidable on some maps. Apparently not here, though. Landed that a little heavy. That's right, troops deployed. And... Throttle back up. Tanks have taken the town, or taken the position anyway. Alright, uh, how many have we got on board? So we've got another 10, let's go cap another base. The AI will automatically cap bases and deploy tanks here, or at least the tanks themselves will. There's no AI helicopters yet, although having said that, it is worth mentioning, I was speaking to Damien Rain yesterday, and apparently at PAX this year, uh, which should be starting uh, tomorrow, the next PAX, um, they are going to be demoing the two new single player modules, which I'm assuming one will be some kind of a skirmish mode, uh, that wasn't actually mentioned, and the other one is probably going to be a demo for the single player campaign. So uh, keep an eye on the JetCat websites and there are their Facebook pages and their social media because I'll probably have some video from that coming through. A little bit awkward to get used to flying. Just got to wrap my mind around the fact that the helicopter is pitching based on uh, pitching and yawing based on the camera position and rather than the central mass of the helicopter. Although, having said that, um, as much as that is strange, from a control point for an inexperienced pilot, that would make this very it does make it easy to control. But this is very smooth to fly with. I haven't exactly got the right helo here for fine maneuvers. Let's drop the collective down and... Yeah, I thought I might have landed that wrong. Oh well, no matter, it means I can get out something a little bit more nimble and throw around. Let's bring out the Cobra. I'm going to slam the collective forward and off we go. Obviously no physics effects to worry about here. There is no, um, no rotor over torque. You're not going to... Slamming the collective to maximum power straight away is not going to rip the rotor off the helicopter or anything else, which is perfectly fine. In a arcade style game like Halliborn, that is not something you really want to model. As much as, as I, I think I mentioned in the last video, I would find it hilarious watching people tear their own helicopters apart trying to fly them, as they discover exactly how difficult it is to fly a real one. Um, yeah, it's for ease of access, you want everybody to feel like a helicopter ace. You, you want it to be realistic enough to be fun, but not so realistic as people start to hate themselves from trying to fly it. Oh, this is nice. Yes, I do like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. The helicopter is responding as expected. Muscle memory is definitely coming into effect. I'm, you know, I make a movement and the helicopter is doing pretty much what I want it to do. And there's a base. All right, so if I've set these controls up right, to be on fire in the back end. Oh, we're still taking hits. 40% health. Alright, so, alternate. Oh, those are, oh, those are a bit high. We need to... Yep, I'm getting shot down. That's perfectly okay. Um, yeah. 
the rockets were aimed slightly higher than I was expecting there. That's, I need to get another pass in on that. Now this configuration is just the gun pods. We have 38 rockets. Yep, okay. Now I don't actually have manual control set for the gunners on this one, so seven on the keyboard and let's change the gunners to auto. I can bind that of course, I did see that in the controls, I just haven't actually done it. And let's reselect one so we're off that. Yeah, I do like the control. Um, it's still very arcadey, but this feels this feels better than it did in the original control modes, uh, the mouse and keyboard. The mouse and keyboard was a bit... Okay, so these ones are up. Oh, that shike got a shot in. Down to 67. We'll back off on the collective. Actually, let's go evasive and break contact before we come back this time. Don't want to go too fast that way because we'll fly straight into another base. Let's break contact around the back here. Right, power to full. Yep, pulling up definitely pulls us back up. Oh, just took another hit there, only a little one. Yeah, there's nothing else for this gun to shoot at at the moment, so it is definitely going to find me interesting. I'm going to take it out, and then I can actually. go. So now we should be only on the defensive gunners for the, uh, for the tanks themselves. They seem to have tinkered with the, uh, the um, AAA a little bit here as well. The AAA doesn't seem anywhere near as threatening as it once was. Oh, got the tank. Yes, we got the tank. Yeah, this is, this is actually, actually finding this much easier to control than mouse and keyboard. This is, oh, oh, we don't want to land on that. We know what happens when we land on that. We want to go forward just a touch. Yeah, so I do like this. Um, now. Right, so. Well, there seems to be a little bit of a bug. Um, I bound the the uh, directional pad, uh, the uh, the hat on the Gladiator 2 is set up a little bit differently to the default so I had to rebind them and it appears that it considers every single butter, uh, button to be camera right as far as I can tell and mouse isn't actually giving me a lot of options here. Well that's alright, we'll just deploy them all there then. Okay, so I'll look into that, but that may be a little bit of a bug. Oh, what's going on here? Something was just exploding the defences there. There's a, there's a box for units over here, but I wouldn't think they would be able to hit from... No, they can definitely hit from that far. Okay, so the units over here, moving on the fore base, must have been shooting the midline. That's some pretty accurate shooting through those trees. Alright, strafing run. Actually, class rockets. Oh, 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 that didn't work. Bring the Cobra out again and go and have some fun. Right, so that part of the flight model I actually seem to I really, really, really like. It takes a little bit to actually get the um the heel up speed and it loses speed rapidly when you pitch back to actually climb. 
this thing into level flight. Your hands off controls, 227 kilometers per hour, so max speed in level flight. Yep, that's fairly easy to do. And it's only going to give me one camera angle, but it seems to be okay. And yep, the turret is being controlled by the D-pad, so you can use the turret to actually lock the aiming position, which is nice. We'll go through and see if we can pop the vehicles here. We're after the... Pretty sure it's a Shilka. It's acting as the defence. And it will be... Oh, there it is in the back. 55 health already. Base attacks seem slightly less suicidal than they once did. I actually don't mind that at all. It puts more emphasis on the players needing to defend their own bases. That was actually one of the small issues that I had with one of the previous builds of Heliborn that I was playing on. The AAA was so aggressive that once you had a base secured with both infantry and uh, infantry and tanks, you largely didn't need to defend it any more than, you know, if it was under attack, just sort of wander over and blast whoever was attacking it. But it was that dangerous for them to actually approach. You didn't need to stress about your base defences all that much. And they both explode. Ah, we have a tank column coming in here somewhere. Judging from the map, by the way, I can't see them. Ah, there they are. Right, so let's bring this into a hover. Oh, a little bit more collective. Bring this into level. Very nice. I do like the detailing on the vehicles they've got here too. Um, clearly collisions with trees aren't available on this map, but it's fine. Oh, and we've landed in the bushes. Stealth helicopter, they can't see us here. All right. Oh, and there is definitely fire coming in. So, God, the engagement ranges on these tanks are pretty low. That is the two, the main battle tanks here, the M60, I believe it is, and oh, whatever the main tank is over here, engaging one another from that range. 52, we're out of rockets completely, so... If that was right, yeah, didn't even get a hit in the I'm gonna go through the trees here, so yeah, that's no matter. Um, yeah, didn't even get a hit indicator then on that tank, so the guns are definitely not recording damage against armor that they shouldn't be able to penetrate anymore. So I actually don't have a problem with that at the slightest, to be honest. That actually makes it it gives more reason to bring out a wider variety of vehicles. You can't just rely on one Cobra to clear everything now. You'll need to have something lined up with a heavy gun that can penetrate tank armor, or something that can have an incredibly heavy uh, ordnance loadout to be able to clear the armored columns. Yeah, I do like this. I think I'm gonna, well, I'll be organizing a Heliborn flyout sometime in the very, very near future. I mentioned in the last video that I will be setting one up. I haven't had a chance to organize it yet, but there will be one running off my Discord server. And yeah, I think I might see if we can organize it. Actually, no, we won't organize a pure joystick flyout. I'll just leave it up to the user's discretion because it'll be interesting to see how joystick users fly against mouse and keyboard users. I'm. I don't feel my aim is really being, you know, overly bothered by the joystick, to be honest. The controls are so smooth, I don't think aiming would be an issue. I don't, like, I don't think it would be that much harder than aiming on a mouse. But I do feel like I've got much better control over the helicopter itself, so... It'll be interesting to see how they interact, whether or not you can have a mouse aim and joystick users on the same map. They took that out quick. I don't think that thing's got a lot of health. Um, interesting to see whether or not you can have mouse aimers and joystick units users on the same map without one side having an advantage over the other. It'd be really nice if Jetcats managed to find the balance in that. 
Anyways, ladies and gents, I'm going to call this one here. This was just a quick test. I just wanted to see exactly how this flight model worked and wanted to do it live. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, Halliborn is available on Steam, and I am currently running a competition for my 50,000 subscriber giveaway, uh, where I'm giving away 10 copies of Halliborn as one of the major prizes. So 10 people will be coming out of that competition with Halliborn. Uh, make sure to tune in to all of Jetcat Games' social media and keep an eye out, because they will probably throw some footage up, I imagine, of the new single-player modules that they are uh, going to demo. As I said, I, I think it's probably going to be a skirmish type module and possibly a campaign, but we'll wait and see exactly what they've got under their hat, I don't know for sure. And of course, the VKB Sim Gladiator 2 will have a video showing a review video on this joystick and how it performs coming up on the channel very soon. Anyways, ladies and gents, until next time, remember to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and until next time, I'll catch you in the skies.